In this video, I'm going to share with you the Bluetti EB70S Power Bank. If you're interested in hearing more about this, keep watching. Before we get started, there's a few things I want to mention. First off, I'd like to thank Bluetti for sending me this power bank so that I could share it with you. The second is, I am not a technical expert on power banks or any other electronic type of devices. What I can do, though, is share with you the information that I have provide links to that information if you want to go deeper. But more importantly, what I can do is share with you my experiences with this power bank. Okay, now, the next thing I want to talk about is why? Why would you want to consider buying a power bank in the first place? Because let's be honest, they're not cheap. They do have a significant cost to them. There is an investment that you'll have to be made, that you'll have to decide on whether or not it's worth it to you. So what are you going to use it for? That's probably the first question. So for me, there were basically three categories of things that I thought I could make use of this battery for. Number one is car camping. To be quite honest, this is some, and I did. I took this car camping recently. Gene and I spent a week in Kujbukwak National Park, and I brought this battery with me, and I used it to power all of my electronic devices. Now, I'll be honest, I did not need a power bank of this size for the things that I took with me, but it had the capacity for a full week without being recharged to give me all the power I needed. Now, the number two thing is emergency preparedness. Now, this one was very significant to me. It's not something I anticipated using it for, but Hurricane Fiona swept through Atlantic Canada here just a short while ago. Uh, there was a lot of damage across the provinces. We suffered a fair amount of damage in our area, not near as much as other places did. We did lose our power for 24 hours, not very long at all compared to other places that are actually still without power. But this battery ended up saving me a lot of money, and I'll explain how it did that in a few moments' time. And the third category of use for a power bank like this is remote working conditions. So if you have power tools that you want to use, but you don't have access to uh, house current, AC current, but you want to use those power tools, you really have two choices at that point. You can buy a gas or propane uh, uh, generator, or you can use a power bank like this. And this does work for a great number of tools. Not everything, but a great number of tools. Before we go down to the tabletop to take a closer look at the Blue Eddy EB70S, I want to give you a few things to consider if when you're trying to decide which power bank is the right one for you. So obviously you're going to look at those three categories I mentioned a minute ago and decide what items it is that you either want to run or recharge off of the battery. Once you have decided what items you want, you want to look at what they're running power requirements are usually stated in wattage. So what are the watt what are the watts that are required to run that item? Now you have to also include what is known as the surge. So especially things with motors, they may have a for instance an 800 watt running requirement, but they might have a 1200 watt surge requirement. And the surge is just the power that the item will draw as it's starting up. So once it gets started and is run to a steady state running condition, its power requirement drops somewhat to a more steady state. So both of those things are important in deciding which battery you want. You also have to decide if you're going to run more than one item at a time. Now this battery, as we'll talk about, can do that. It can run more than one item at a time, but I have to add up the total power requirement for each of those items to be assured that it doesn't exceed the power capability of this battery. And the other thing you have to think about is how long do you want those items to run for? And I'll give you one example right now, which was very significant to me, and that is our freezer here at home. During the power outage, I left the freezer go without opening it, threw a blanket over it, tried to reserve the cold inside as long as possible. But towards the end of that 24 hour power outage, I wanted to make sure that I did not let things uh, defrost and therefore lose the contents of the freezer. The power bank ran the freezer without any difficulties whatsoever. Not only my freezer, we then took it over to my mother-in-law's freezer who ended up losing her power for 48 hours and it ran her freezer for that 
time period. Now, it was pretty close to empty when it was finished, but it was capable of saving all of those items that were in the freezer. That is not insignificant at all. And the last thing you want to consider when you're looking at your power bank is how are you going to recharge it? Because it only lasts so long. And there is a formula I'll talk about in a second for how you can determine how long your power bank is going to last. So there are basically probably more than three, but at least three ways that I know of for recharging power banks. One is obviously from AC, house current, when you have power, you can charge this bank up. You can run it off of a, uh, a solar panel, if you happen to have a solar panel, of course. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And the last one is you can run it off of DC current from your car. So 12 volt DC current will also recharge power banks like this. And as I mentioned, I'm sure there are other ways of doing that as well. All right, now it's time to go down to the tabletop. I won't get overly technical, but I will show you all the key features talk about the function and operation of this power bank and then we'll do some demonstrations and then we'll do a pro and con before wrapping the video up. All right, just before we take a closer look at the Bluetti EB70S, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So it comes with the all important operating manual and warranty information, the AC power brick for recharging it from your house current, and two cables. The first is the 12 volt DC car adapter and the second one is the uh, connections for a solar panel. Let's bring the power bank back into the picture. Now I am referring to this as a power bank but you will also hear these referred to as solar generators and that is most often because they are usually connected to solar panels so you can uh, store the energy from the sun in the power bank for later use but I do not have a solar panel to demonstrate that with, so I'll probably just end up always calling this a power bank until such point as I do get a solar panel, which I hope to do in the future. All right, I'm going to give you some general specifications for the battery, and then we'll dive a little deeper. So the overall weight of this battery, 21.4 pounds. The length in this direction is 12.6 inches. The height from the table to the top is 8.7 inches, and the depth from front to back is 8.5 inches. It has an operating temperature range of 14 degrees to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 10 to 40 degrees Celsius. And as I mentioned a minute ago, the warranty, it is does have a comprehensive 24 month warranty. Now the heart of any power bank are the batteries themselves inside and that's what one of the things that makes the Bluetti stand out in terms of other uh, power banks is the fact that it has lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now they're mo more commonly you have heard of lithium ion batteries but these are different and they're actually the better of the two to have. So a lithium ion batteries have two downsides when it comes to this type of device. One is the number of times that you can recharge them so they have a more limited lifespan in terms of how often they can be recharged and that's significant but the other is is that they have been known and it is not common but they have been known when they get hot to ignite and cause fires. Well both of those issues are resolved when you're using lithium, lithium iron phosphate batteries. So for for instance, the batteries in this have a 2500 cycle of charges. So 2500 charges, you can full charges from zero to 100%, 2500 times. Uh, that's not insignificant when you think about it. That's more than most people will ever use a battery like this. Now even at that, after you reach 2500 full recharges, its thing doesn't die, it just starts to reduce the amount of capacity that it can take in. So they'll say at that point it starts to reduce down to about 80% and you continue to use this battery for a long time afterwards it just will have a little bit less storage function so that's quite important it does have a battery management system with over voltage protection and short circuit protections and that's kind of cool because one of the things I was a little concerned about when I started testing this device out is I did not want to blow it up. That was what I thought might happen. But it was great. If I plugged an item in that drew more power than this battery bank was capable of, 
it just stopped and it said overload. So it did no damage to the battery whatsoever. So um, don't be afraid to plug things in if you're not quite sure if it's going to operate test them on the battery and see if it will handle it. And you'll see a readout, as I'll demonstrate in a little while, of how many watts each of those items will draw. And if it exceeds the cap capability of the battery, it just stops. So that was a good <laughs> reassurance for me. All right, so let's go into the ports on the front of the power bank and the ways it can be used for recharging. One of the things I like about this is that they're separated into two categories. So on this side of the battery are all the DC outputs for direct current, and on this side are the AC or alternating current outputs. So, and there's a few more features to show you on top of that, and let's start with exactly that. This is the input port. So all of the energy going into the battery goes in through this port. We'll talk more about the alternatives you have or the different types of charging and what the capacity is for input port in a moment. There is a, a, a LED panel which I really really like and I'll show you that in a moment. At least I like most of it. There is a few things about it that I'm not too fan, uh, keen on. And over here is the battery turn on button and a small LED lamp which I have a few comments to make about as well. So let's just go over the DC ports for a minute and then we'll move on. So as far as DC goes there are two starting over here 100 watt fast charge type c output so that's the type of cable that looks like a usb type c on either end and some devices can be charged at a much faster rate than say most cell phones such as some tablets and laptops and even a flashlight that i recently uh, tested will accept the power out of these fast charge ports recharging incredibly fast by comparison there of course is the 12 volt 12 volt DC 10 amp uh, car port, sometimes referred to as cigarette lighter port. There are also two 12, vo 12 volt 10 amp uh, output ports here. These are not as commonly used by a lot of devices, but you may have devices that will uh, make use of these. And there are the two USB A output ports, 5 volt 3 amp here. And on top, I lean it forward to show you this, is a, a wireless charging device for phones and some other devices that can accept that. And this will run at 15 watts. Now that's something, I'll be honest right now, I could not uh, test out because my phone will not accept wireless charging. But I, I understand that it's, it's just, well, and what's nice about it is, you put your phone down, you walk away, and you don't have to connect any wires up. And when you come back, over time, of course, it will be totally recharged. Now, going over to the AC side of things, you have actually four outputs of AC. And you'll note that uh, two of them do not have ground uh, wire uh, ports on them and two of them do. Now let's be clear, this battery is not grounded. These ports do not actually connect to anything. They're just there so they will accept any type of a cord that does have the ground wire and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But each of these ports will operate at between 100 and 120 volts AC and they will deliver up to 800 watts of power and have a surge capacity of 40 1400 watts. So in my experience, there was a few of the devices that I uh, tried on this that easily exceeded the 1800 watts, but did work for a period of time because of that 1400 watt surge. Now, to be honest, they weren't working at their full capacity. And I'll talk more about a few of those examples in a moment's time. Again, no damage to either the device or the thing that I was uh, testing, but it was nice to know that I could at least try it to see if it was going to give me what I wanted. All right, so to turn the device on, I, and I've discovered that you can just press the button and it will turn on and display, oh, all right, there's gripe number one. This button not only controls turning on the whole device, but it also controls the LED. And what I should have done, and I'm going to have to run this through its cycle, is just giving it a quick tap, and that will turn the device on. If you hold your finger on the button for longer than even half a second, then it activates the uh, flashlight or the light on the side of this. 
That's a minor gripe. It's not a deal breaker. It's just a bit annoying when you're looking at this from the front and uh, you go to turn it on and you get a bright light in your eyes. I'm not sure why you even have to have a light on a battery like this, except that it does make it easier if you're trying to work in the dark in a power outage so that you can see what it is you're trying to plug in. I can see the benefit of it that way. I just really wish it was operated by its own button. That would have been great. So now that the device is turned on, you can begin plugging in the devices that you're going to charge. Now, if you want to operate things on the DC side, it has its own button, which you power up, and you'll see a little green LED in the button itself, indicating that you're ready to operate. And the same thing on the AC side, you power up, and you'll see a little green button there. So this is all active now. Everything is ready to go. But here's what I discovered about this as well. Without turning the unit on, if I plug the device device in at least to the DC side of things that started it up all by itself so I didn't have to turn the unit on now the other thing you're going to see in a moment is that the display is going to blank out now it's you know it's a power saving thing although considering how much power this has it's it's going to last a lot longer than necessary but you see there it blanked out so you may not be able to uh, know right away how much power you have left in your battery or how much uh, power it's drawing that type of thing a quick touch of any of the buttons will bring it back up normally there we go just longer than half a second and then it brings the display back up so that you can see now hopefully i will be able to show you each of the elements of this display before it goes blank on me for a second now over here is your battery status indicator so it's telling you how much power is left in your battery it has five segments each segments representing 20 percent of the power that's in the battery and um okay so it's, it's functional. It does give you an indication. Once again, press it. Uh, it's functional. It gives you an indication roughly where your battery status is, how much power you have left. The problem is with this, though, is that it gives you it in 20% segments. So if I'm at the top bar is empty, I'm somewhere between 80 and 100%. That's all I know. I don't know precisely how much power I have left. So I'm unable to kind of calculate how long I can run a device. Like even now, I'm running about 60%. Or, well, that's the thing. It's between 60 and 80%. Once again, bring it up. I have between 60 and 80% capacity left in the battery. Now, that's a lot. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of capacity, and I can do a lot with what I have here. The problem is, is I don't know how long it's going to last because I'm not sure if it's 60 or 80% or anywhere in between. I really would have preferred a numerical number right here. In fact, you could do two things that would be nice on here. And one is to provide a numerical number of exactly what percentage of the battery is left. And when you plug devices in, it'd be nice if the display also showed how long they're going to run for. And uh, because, of course, that's easy enough for this to calculate out for you. So if you're running your freezer, as I did during the power outage, then it would be nice to know that I can run the freezer for four hours, five six hours. Now, when we talk about running the freezer, I won't get off track too far here. It really, the, it's on, the freezer is only drawing power from the battery while the compressor motor is running. And that's it. So it only runs for a short period of time and, and until it brings the freezer down to the temperature and then it stops. And then the battery is just resting. And then the next time that the uh, freezer has to kick in to keep the temperature stable, then that's when it draws. So I suppose even using this on a freezer is not a good example of wanting to know how long it's going to run because it really depends on how often the compressor comes on. But there are a lot of devices if I'm using, let's say, a drill or a fan or charging up some of my other devices that have to be recharged. It'd be good to know how long I have left on the battery for that. Okay, so those are the basic features on the front of the battery. And I think I already mentioned this and the, the 15 watt wireless charger on top. I don't have a phone that I can charge or demonstrate that with, but uh, nice feature for anyone who has devices that need that type of recharge.
All right, having gone over the basics for the EB70S, I thought I would give you a few demonstrations of it in use, showing you how you can use this power bank to operate or recharge, depending on what you want to do, different devices. I'll be repositioning the camera so that you can see the devices being plugged in and charging, and also how the panel displays the power going in and the power coming out. All right, I pulled the camera back a little bit so I can show plugging in the devices I want to demonstrate this with. So one of the things I used this battery for while I was away car camping was just recharging my personal devices. Now, honestly, this is much more of a power bank than is necessary for doing this with, but the capacity this had meant I could stay out there for weeks and not have to worry about running out of power. And I mean devices like this tablet or my cell phone or my flashlights, but I thought I'd just use the tablet so the display is a little bit bigger and you can see it operating. I already have a short cable plugged into it. All I have to do now is just reach down and plug it in on there. And what we should see is the device starting to power up here to show that it is in fact charging. It takes, this is an older tablet, so it's gonna take a little while. Ooh, I'm down to 29%. Well, it won't take too long with this power bank to charge that up to full capacity. But at the same time, I'm wondering if I can show you the panel being uh, lit up. There we go. Took a second for it to do that. Um, hopefully that's showing up on the camera. It is only drawing one watt. One watt. So for a battery like this, it's uh, going to last for almost forever when you think about it, drawing one watt at a time. Now, every device is going to have its own uh, power requirements. Obviously, something like a cell phone or a flashlight or a tablet isn't going to draw very much. Let's see what else I have handy that I can demonstrate this with. All right, I want to demonstrate it using a coffee grinder. Now, uh, when Jen and I go away camping, we're pretty self-sufficient. We can do things mostly off-grid. Uh, so I have a hand grinder for my coffee, and we have uh, non-electric means of making our coffee. But uh, at home, what we like to do, of course, is use a coffee grinder like this for grinding our coffee every morning. So during the power outage, not because I needed to, because again, I do have hand grinders, but just because I wanted to play with it to make sure that it could do it, I used the power bank to run it. So let's find a port to plug this into. Make sure the AC is on. I'm gonna uh, get the panel to light up just so it can show you. There we go, so the panel is lit up. 100, 107 watts well below what you can, this panel or this bank can provide. So 107 watts, a couple seconds, and your coffee is ready to go. Now, I will tell you at this point that I did try to use her drip coffee maker here at home during the power failure to make coffee with. Uh, it kind of worked. And here's my experience, and this applies right across the board pretty much as well. The coffee uh, percolator started to work, but and I, I was pretty sure I was going to exceed the capacity of this battery, and eventually it did. So what happened is it went to surge, and then it calmed down to 800 watts, but in truth, the, the coffee drip machine actually takes more than 800 watts to operate. So it was working, but it was working very slowly. The water was not getting near as hot, and at just a few minutes in, it shut down. So it exceeded the capacity of this battery. Now, that's not a fault of the battery. That's just a mismatch of me trying to make something not designed to work on this battery work with this battery. Kind of worked, but not really. Now, what did I learn from that? And this is important. And I can kind of put this down into two categories. This will run just about anything I test it with it that had a motor but it did not do so well with things that required heat. For instance, well, let me just get it and I'll demonstrate. All right, I'm trying to get both of these uh, into the video at the same time. So this is just a small fan with a heater element. So you can use it just as a cooling fan or you can use it as some nice quiet heat with two levels. And this, we did not have to use this during the power failure because we were very fortunate that the weather was nice enough that it never really got cold. I would consider doing this, of course, in the winter time if I didn't have any way of maintaining house heat, but I didn't need to use this. Still, it was fun to try it out anyway. So let me plug the fan in. So obviously plugged in here, make sure the AC is on. And uh, let me just tap the power button to bring the display up. I'm going to run the fan first and you'll be able to see this operating. 
So that's low speed for the fan running at, uh, as it speeds up. Tiny surge, it went up to 17, 18 watts and it's running about 17 watts now. Turn it up to high. 24 watts, so it's not drawing a lot of power at all. Turning it off now. Now, if I turn it over to the heat side, so that it's not only the fan running, but there's a heater element, that's going to be something different. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. Bring the panel back up. There we go. Immediately, it's starting to draw more power, and the internal fans on the battery are starting to operate to keep it cool. And just shut down. All right, so that was what happened right away. It went into overload. It could not handle the heating element of the fan. And that's what I found pretty much right across the board is if it had a heating element, with one exception I'll mention in a minute, if it had a heating element, uh, it probably is going to exceed the capability of the batteries. But if it just has a motor like a fan or any other device, it probably is going to work. What was that one exception? Gina tried her curling iron on this. It worked just fine. The curling iron did not draw anywhere near the energy. She also tried her hair dryer. At low, it worked. But at high, it shut the battery down because it was just more than the battery capacity is. Now, here's a quick hint for doing this. If you're trying to decide whether or not the device is more than the battery can handle, a lot of devices, a lot of devices will have the power uh, requirements written on them somewhere. So um, let me see. I don't think it has it on this power bank. Actually, yes, it does. I should be able to show this. I'm hopefully I can get in close enough to show you. But right here, it says 120 volts, 1500 watts. So that would be what it requires to run the fan and the heater on high at the same time as 1500 watts. Obviously, much more than this battery is designed for. And when you try it, it just shuts down and then this doesn't operate. So no big deal. You can try them. You can try and match them by taking a look at the device to see what the current draw is for your device before even plugging it in. And you'll get an idea if this will run off your battery or if you before you purchase, if you're going to be looking for a bigger battery. All right, let's see what else I can find to demonstrate with. All right, so well, some of the other things that I tried uh, with the power bank were um, tools, some of my electric tools. Now, um, for demonstration, I'm going to use my angle grinder, but I did try it with most of my power tools here at home to see what I could operate it with. Things like drills, and as you'll see, this angle grinder, which draws more than the drill, work just fine. I also have some cordless tools that I was able to plug the battery recharges in, no problem at all. One device or one tool that I had that I had hoped would work but did not work was my circular saw. So it would not power the circular saw. Now it could be it was an older one that drew more energy than newer ones would, but it was a mismatch for this. But let me just demonstrate and use this as an example of using power tools. Again, make sure the AC current is on. Plug it in. It'll be a bit noisy. Let's just see if I can bring the panel up for there. So you can see the panel on. And I think that was 587. I think that that's what demonstrated in turn of watts. So well below the 800 and the fans came on right away to keep the battery cool. All right, let's see what else I can demonstrate this with. One last demonstration. Let's recharge the Bluetti EB70S using the AC power brick. So I'm going to plug the brick into my power outlet, but you'll note that it's not plugged into the device itself and already you should be able to hear the fans on the power brick running. So that's what I'm talking about. There is no draw of power, yet the fans are running. It's a good thing in the sense that it will never overheat for you, but it just seems to be a waste. Now you can see the thing is plugged in with a little green light. Let's plug it into the power bank itself and start charging it up. Now, I think I, oh, there is, it uh, lit right up. I wasn't sure if the panel was going to light right up or not. But you can see happening here is the power status or the battery status indicator is flashing lights to show you that it is, in fact, charging. The fans have turned on in the power bank itself to keep it cool. And you can see the uh, input is reading 190 watts at this moment. So even though this battery is capable of putting out 200 watts, um, for whatever reason, let's see if I can get that to light back up there. 
we're only getting about 190 watts so it'll take a slight bit longer to charge the battery at that rate but not too bad at all it's still only about five hours i would think in the to recharge the battery that is from fully uh, discharged all right let's discuss a few of the pros and cons for the blue Eddy eb70s so number one right off the top is the quality of construction and that's one of the things that blue Eddy is well known for so blue Eddy being one of the top line of power banks similar to this on the market today and they have such a wide range of offerings for you i'm sure that whatever your needs are blue Eddy has something that you would be interested in taking a look at so quality construction without doubt. I've never seen another power bank like this, although I don't have all that much experience with power banks. The other thing I really like about it is the fact that it is using the uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. I think I may have said that wrong earlier, rather than the lithium ion. So why is that such a big deal and such a pro? It's the life cycles with 2,500 plus life cycles before the battery even starts to lose its capacity. This is probably going to last me the rest of my life. I cannot imagine charging it more than 2,500 cycles. And even if I do, it doesn't mean that it's not going to operate. It just starts to lose some of its capacity. And the third thing I really like like about this is the extensive 24 month warranty. Bluetti's got you covered if you have any problems within the first two years. All right, so what are some of the cons then for this? Now, some of these are both pro and con, and let's just start right off the top with the display. So that bright blue LED display is wonderful. I'm able to see that in daylight and I did test that while I was out camping. No problem seeing the display. That's not a small thing because quite often, um, you know, some displays you just get blanked out by the sunlight, but this one, no problem at all. But that the same display has a few shortcomings. And I think I mentioned this already. One of them is the battery status indicator. The fact that it uses 20% bars to show you the battery status rather than a percentage number, a numerical number, I just think it would be nicer for me, at least, maybe you don't mind, that it would show the numerical number plus maybe how long you have left on your battery if you've got something plugged in and drawing charge. Not a deal breaker just something to be accustomed to. And really it's only in that top percentage where you start to miss it. Like how much do I have? Do I have 80, 81, 82, 99? Do I have hundred percent charge? You can't tell because it's just giving you it in 20% ranges. The third thing I'll say about the display is the fact that it only stays on for such a short period of time. And then you, if you want to see the display again, you have to press one of the buttons. Not a big deal. Again, that's there for a reason. It saves battery strength. It's not necessary for it to keep it running for a long period of time, maybe just a little longer than what it runs now. Now, speaking about the buttons on the face of the power bank, they're small, they're quite small. I wondered at first if I was going to get used to that, no problem at all. The fact that they're small is not a problem. Maybe finding them in the dark can be, but otherwise I didn't have a problem. And I know that once they are lit up, I know exactly where they are. It gives me an indication whether the AC or the DC side is operational. The on off button, again, small, you know, I don't even see it as necessary because you can operate or, or tune up or turn on the AC or DC side simply by plugging something into it. But I guess what annoys me, just a small amount, is the fact that that same on off button operates the LED light. Uh, I, I guess I got used to the fact that an LED light does have some practical purpose, especially if you're trying to use it in the dark during a power failure. It's just that quite often I unintentionally blind myself with that light trying to turn the unit off. I really would like to see the light there, but on a separate button. That would be a perfect combination as a power button separated from the LED light. Now, the other thing I'll mention is this is not a con in any way. It's just a wish list thing. Th something I would like to see added to this device. And that is another way of inputting energy into it. So, and Blue Eddy does have some other power banks that have this. The, the ability to not only plug in that AC charger or charge from DC or, or so 
solar panel, but have another connector next to it so you can double up on the input. Maybe one dedicated to solar panels plus one dedicated to whatever other power source you want to use. And as I mentioned, there are models from Blue Eddy that have both of those things. I think it'd be nice to see that added to this. Other than that, there's not a lot that I can, well, actually there's nothing that I can criticize about this life and or this battery and nothing that is a deal breaker. Okay, when I open this video up, I had mentioned that uh, I'm not a technical expert and, and I really am not. I learned a lot in the process of testing this power bank out and I consider myself much more versed than I used to be, but chances are if you have a really technical question, I'm going to struggle to answer it. But whatever questions you do have or whatever comments you would like to make about this power bank, then please put them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. And if I can't answer them, I should be able to provide you information in the video description where you can find out more about that. Okay, that's all I have for you today. As I mentioned, put your comments in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.